Hey guys, it is the 22nd of May today. My name is Jess McDonnell and you are watching GameSpot News. HD versions of Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light are set to land on PC, PS4 and Xbox One later this summer. And we've started to get those juicy resolution details. A Deep Silver rep said the game will be 1080p on PS4 and the resolution for Xbox One is yet to be finalized. Before you go worrying too much about that though, both versions are going to run at 60 frames per second and the dev are promising updated visuals with advanced lighting, dynamic weather, more detailed characters with improved animation, more dynamic destruction and improved smoke, fire and particle effects. The game will cost 25 bucks a piece or you can grab the Metro Redux package with both titles and all the DLC on any of the three platforms for 50 bucks. Before any of us get our hopes up for Fallout 4 or The Elder Scrolls 6, Bethesda have said it's going to be a good while before we hear about their next title. Marketing exec Pete Hines said, We simply want people to know not to expect any kind of announcement anytime soon. I don't know for certain when it would be. The rumor mill that is Fallout 4 has been trundling along for a while now, but it seems if it is indeed in the works, we won't be hearing about it until at least next year. Some new screenshots have been released from the upcoming Wii U game Hyrule Warriors to give you some sense of what the Zelda Dynasty Warriors mashup is going to be like. There's a lot of them to roll through if you're so inclined, but in summation, Link has epic blue eyes and smacks the hell out of a horde of beasties. Link holds an item above his head triumphantly after opening a chest. Impa gets her unrealistically large sword fighting on, oh, and boobs, because video games. Lastly, the producer of Soul Calibur has explained why Soul Calibur Lost Swords is single player only, and it has to do with its pay to win model. Producer Masaki Hoshino says, Originally, we were thinking about having a multiplayer option, but because we're going with a pay to win model, we were worried that by having online multiplayer, for all the new users that would be coming in experiencing the game for the first time, they might be immediately deterred by fighting against opponents who had superior equipment and gear. And we didn't want to have that kind of negative impact on new players. The main reason for opting toward free to play for the dev was to engage the casual market as well as old fans of the series. Let me know whether you reckon a fighting game can work without the inclusion of multiplayer in that commenting section below. If you prefer you can also chat to me on my Twitter where I'm at Jess McDonnell. That is everything that I've got for you today but remember tomorrow I've got my top five favorite stories of the whole week for you so be sure to check back then. I'll see you soon.